I could while away the hours Conferring with the flowers Consulting with the rain And my head I'd be scratching While my thoughts were busy hatching If I had All right, I want to share this brain. tool that I've developed that I've always wanted to develop a better way to calculate what the kilowatt hours a wind turbine would produce in the course of a year based on the particular turbine where you have the power curve measured already and what your annual average wind speed is for your area and the height of your turbine above the ground. And this takes a, quite a bit of a number crunching, so it's better to do it in a, in a spreadsheet. So what I have here is a tool where you can enter your mean wind speed for your area and identify what height that, that wind speed was measured. Now, most areas have a, an airport, and the, the local weather sensor there, the anemometer, is set at 10 meter height. It's kind of a standard, so it stays the same you know, universally across aviation. And you can go, there's a number of sites that you can actually go and find out what the annual wind speed is for some of these local airports. So if I go down to Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, right here, come across, it says the annual average is 10 and a half miles per hour. So I can put that into this spreadsheet right here, measured at 10 meters. I can also change the hub height to adjust what the actual wind speed average would be if it was measured at a different height. Now what happens is wind, your average wind, really you spend so many hours per year uh, above that average and so many hours less than average. And it turns out in wind it follows what's called a Rayleigh distribution, which is this kind of a shaped curve here versus a regular bell curve, which would be which would look like this. This would be a, a more of a bell-shaped bell curve around that average. But I put in here the Rayleigh distribution shape for the for wind so that I can calculate it properly. So what you want to do, this actually identifies of the 8,760 hours per year, how many hours the wind is spent at different wind speeds. And this is important because wind, the power in the wind is the cube of the wind speed. So you want to you want to kind of match the turbine to the the wind speed that you have in your area and take advantage of the the power in the wind that's above your mean, let's say. And so what I've done is I have this distribution of the hours at different wind speeds based on the data you enter here. Then over here I have a selector for different power curves for the different turbines that I have test data on. So I have the Orlando 2.8 meter drone, which you've seen on YouTube, the Winchura 750, the Winmax HY400 59 inch car PMAs, and the TOG 500 is where the data I have in here currently just for demonstration purposes. And what then it will do is it'll calculate out what the <coughs> annual kilowatt hour production is and the, essentially what the kilowatt hour per day would be equivalent just kind of as a check. So if I go over to an example here, Orlando's, I call it the Orlando San because it's a Chinese wind turbine that he's had excellent luck with, a very good producer and very reliable. I have its power curve entered here, miles per hour and, and watts, and if you remember on his channel at about 20 miles an hour he generates about a thousand watts and then I have it shown here graphically of what that does usually it, it'll go up to about 2,000 watts and it won't really kind of get any more than that and it'll be some point where the the owner will will shut it off uh, but take another example let's say the windy nation here's an example of where it goes up peaks out about 1200 watts the furling kicks in totally at about mid 30s and uh, it doesn't generate any power after that which is pretty pretty good design. Here's the wind max where it goes up to about 500 watts and then with aerodynamic braking it kind of peak it kind of flattens out. 
So if I go back to the uh, table here, and you so you can see, let's say that our average wind speed instead of 10 and a half in my area, it was 20. So you can see what happens to this curve, the distribution of the hours curve, when I change that mean. And so this is really important to kind of take advantage of this, and it shows you what the effect is of having a higher wind speed uh, point. If you see here, it's 2139 with this particular turbine, which is the TLG at 20. And if I go back to my 10 and a half, it's down to 635 would be normal if I set it at that 10 meter height. If I help it, if I have it set only at the, the the actual hub at only five meters, you can see what the effect of that is. It drops it down. So I have a way of of scaling uh, scaling that correctly in here. So what happens when I enter this data is over here on the left, get this dragged over here, is where I have the miles per hour, I have the probab probability distribution, I have the number of hours that are calculated for that, based on that curve, and then I have for the particular turbine that's selected, what the power curve values are and then you multiply these columns together and you come up with how many kilowatt hours on an annual basis is generated at each of these wind speeds. So that's what you sum up this column and it comes up with this uh, total production right here for the year. So it's kind of a neat tool. I can uh, sit here and and change say okay I'm going to start with uh, Orlando's uh, turbine get an idea how many kilowatt hours per day and how much per year it would generate based on this uh, assumptions about my height. If I want to say, well, I want to, I want to add another two meters to the height, and, you know, what's going to be, a, what's going to be a, the effect of that on my annual production. So it kind of gives me a, a way of evaluating different turbines and different, al different heights to determine uh, which is kind of the best fit for me. And uh, you can see, I just want to sh show you that, uh, let's say, uh, in this example here, we got 2,000, 2,100. And if I change that to everything else being the same, just change that to a Ventura. It down, drops down to 726. If I do the wind max, which is smaller still, 502 per year. If I do a car PMA, <coughs> You can see that drops way down. And the reason that the car PMAs are so poor is if you remember from my video on the wind blue and the and the Firebird, is they don't generate any current flow until about 12 or 13 miles an hour. Well, if you look on a typical case like Minneapolis, 10 and a half, there's a lot of hours in the year where the turbine is spinning in winds that are less than 10 and a half miles an hour. And it's not generating any current flow or any power for any of that wind flow. You might see it spinning, and there's a lot of videos of car PMA turbines spinning, but they're not generating any current flow, so you're not generating any watts. You're only going to be generating power when the wind is faster than that, that cut-in speed of 12 or 13 miles an hour. So you really want to avoid buying any of those unless you really have an average wind speed that's quite high. So, you know, ideally higher than that cut-in wind speed of the turbine itself, which might be, you know, 13 miles an hour. So that's why this production value is so poor on uh, car PMA turbines. And then lastly, if I put in the TLG one here, you can see how, <coughs> how that one does all things being the same. So anyway, I wanted to share this uh, tool that I've developed. Uh, it's going to be quite useful in my professional work. And um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Talk to you later. With my regal visa, I could be another Caesar, but he only had the third. <laughs>